All right, we're going to take our uh, financials that we wired before. Uh, we did the cash budget and stuff. And we're going to build pro forma statements. So if you have um, something like this, so our end of fiscal year 2017, and you want to project what your expenses and things will look like in 2018, you can build pro formas. Uh, and so pro forma statements will look like this. So I'm going to create new column B. So this will be December 31st of 2018. And I'm going to go ahead and center it so it looks like the rest of them. Uh, although you can pretty easily. Why won't you center? There we go. Uh, you can pretty easily um, bring formatting over, right? So if you have any formatting problems, you can always copy the formatting of before. Right click, paste all your formatting, and it'll match up if it didn't add, right? So, anyway, we want to go get an estimate for uh, operating revenues. So I'm going to do that real quick. Uh, if it's a year that hasn't been finished yet, which typically it would be if you're doing pro formas, uh, we're going to be doing this from the outside perspective if I don't work for the, or, or from the inside perspective if I do work for the company um, in some instances, but here I don't have any idea what their uh, real revenues would be. And so, uh, we can go to Yahoo Finance and look at what analysts expect their revenues to be. Um, and we can use things like that. So here's UNP. Boy, this is not fast enough. UNP, come on. Why isn't it coming up? Come on, boys. UNP. There we go. There's Union Pacific. And... Analysis. Here's earnings, here's revenue estimates um, for current year. Uh, is this? Uh, do they already have 2018 finished? Did they already announce the financials? If your company already announced your financials for your homework, you can just use what they announced. So that's fine if you want to use actual 2018 for your first pro forma. Um, since we're kind of at a weird time of the year where some of you will have them announced. So 22,832, like that. Uh, and then we're going to use the percent of sales method where we can and where we can't. We'll kind of talk about, in general, we're just going to carry those numbers over for now. Uh, and there'd be other stuff you'd have to do. Um, but like percent of sales, if you're not sure what things should be percent of sales in general, uh, anything that's a variable cost, uh, would typically, unless it's things like fuel where gas prices are volatile or dirtier and things like that, um, you can always go to common size and kind of look at, so like this other revenue line tends to be fairly stable, which means freight revenues tend to be fairly stable, and so those can be percent of revenues. Um, compensation and benefits, looks like it's gone up a little bit um, over the last few years, so it was a little lower a few years ago. Uh, you can always do, we're going to do percent of sales for five years. Um, it did go down last year, so that'll be fine. You could do the last three years as your percent of sales instead of five years if you thought it was more appropriate. Uh, this looks pretty flat, so percent of sales are worth of depreciation should not be tied to sales. It might be over short term, but you can see it kind of bounces down and up a little bit. Uh, so things like that. So you can kind of look at your common size that you built. Um, but when you're doing percent of sales and you can do like this, so you're going to take uh, the sales that you are expecting, you're going to lock that, uh, and you're going to multiply by the average of the last five years as a percent of that number. So you just take that divided by that, lock, comma, uh, that divided by that, lock, comma, that divided by that, lock. Comma, and I'll bring it all back up here in a second. We'll talk about a couple things. Uh, lock, comma, that divided by that. Lock, close. Let me bring it back up so you can probably see it better. Uh, oh, maybe not. Well, it's over here. So anyway, you're taking the revenue estimate. Um, in this case, it's actuals, but typically your estimate times average, and you're turning the thing you're you're wanting to guess as a you're turning it into a percent hit divided by the total revenue for each of the last five years when you hit commas the average will do each one separately 
Um, and so that's what you get if you lock um, all of these when you're doing that. Uh, you can then just copy that formula and paste it anywhere else you want it. So I'm going to paste it there. Um, I'm going to paste it. We said this was pretty even. Um, this was pretty even. This was not. This was not. Uh, equipment and other rents. Uh, maybe it's gone down quite a bit last year, so maybe not. Other seems to be pretty close, so for now that would be a fine estimate. And that's about it for this group. So other, and then the rest of these, like I said, just if you don't have what you want when you're doing your own companies in, in class this time, just carry these over, and we'll talk a little bit more about this later. This can still. It's the total operating cost. You can just sum up your operating costs. Um, operating income is total revenue minus uh, operating expenses, like that. Uh, other income is not going to track sales. Typically, interest expense is typically not going to track sales. We'll carry over the last amounts for sure. Um, Income before taxes, so this is like wiring again. So actually, the ones that are like wiring again, you can just highlight and, um, and drag over, right? It's like this. You don't even have to re. We already wired them, so they already calculate correctly. And then income taxes. The way I usually do income taxes uh, is I like to take. Um, I, I typically like to take it as a percent. For the five, you know, for the last five years, and see what the typical income tax expenses. So, uh, so you can do something like this, where you take that divided by that, because they were normal income tax years. And so I can drag it over and see, like, for these four years, it was 37 percent, you know, almost 38, 38, 37, almost 38, uh, 37 and a half. So it was fairly flat. The problem is. Uh, 2017, the tax laws changed significantly, especially the repatriation um, laws, too. Uh, and so the taxes for 2017 for all the companies are going to be really weird, and the tax rates going forward are going to be lower than this. So for now, I would plug in the new, like, 20% um, times that, and that would be fine. Since these were negative when they were paying taxes, they didn't actually pay um, taxes last year uh, due to some of the changes and things, but it'll go back to normal pretty quick. You want to make that a negative um, since it's going to sum these up. But there you go. Uh, there's a wired pro forma income statement. Uh, and I will say some of these other things like depreciation. If you're building pro forma for depreciation, you work for a company like UMP, they're going to be, you're, you're just going to ask somebody. Uh, who's working on, on depreciation schedules and stuff, what depreciation should be should be for the year. So there will be accounting people who work on stuff like that. Uh, fuel, you'd have to project fuel prices, and, and you'd have some other inputs, and you'd, you'd probably have to project that, um, things like that. So you'd, you'd probably depend on other people or for doing projection directly for the things that don't track sales. If you're working for a smaller company, typically they're less complex and easy to do. Depreciation is just about... Uh, going and looking at macro schedules, looking at your assets, seeing how long you've had them, um, things like that, and then, then doing the math. So anyway, that's a pro forma um, income statement, and uh, I will do the balance sheet as well, and then we will move right along.